A-level textiles has now been changed to A-level fashion and textiles, which is very exciting. It changed in 2017. When the new A-level design and technology fashion and textiles course um, was developed in 2017, there was a real buzz in the press because the fashion industry makes a massive uh, contribution to the UK economy. And this was a course that actually was tailored to the fashion industry. And we've had quite a few newspapers interested in it. And the first slide is just a, a summary from the Telegraph and the Independent. The reason I was very excited about the changes to the course was because I've come from industry. Um, I worked in the fashion industry for many years. We were, I was a supplier to Topshop. And all of the things we're going to learn in the new A-level was exactly my job. A lot of the uh, technical stuff we do with fibres and fabrics, I had to get involved in whenever we were testing fabrics uh, for their suitability for different types of garments. A lot of the um, garment making alterations and things like that we had to do in order to get garments to fit. When we went to fit sessions in Topshop, you will also be doing too. So this A-level actually prepares you for industry, which I think is really exciting. And what does it involve? Well, like the GCSE, it's 50% coursework and then 50% exams, but you'll have two exams. Okay? The first exam is all the technical principles, which will be a little bit of an overlap with your um, GCSE. Uh, we will look at um, fibres, textiles, um, we look at making the fabrics themselves, then we look at what we can do to finish those fabrics, to make them waterproof or to make them uh, easy care, all that sort of stuff, and then we will get down to making products, mainly garments. Um, we will then uh, look at industrial garment production, so everything you make with me, you will also learn how that would be do, done in industry. And then we will look at, uh, as part of that, we will be doing pattern cutting. So I'll be teaching you proper pattern cutting. And one of the first things you're going to do is to um, produce a skirt right from the get-go. Um, and I'm going to give you a pencil and a tape measure and a ruler and some pattern paper and some instructions, obviously. And you will produce your own skirt pattern and uh, uh, then redesign it into a different style of a skirt. Um, and that is your first look at pattern cutting whenever we start the course. Then we'll um, have a look at embellishment. We'll have a white on white project where all of the surface decoration we do will be white surface decoration on a white uh, piece of fabric. Um, just to teach you all of the different uh, types of embellishment and help you to explore some new ones and teach yourself new ones. Then after that, we will um, have a look at making a shirt. And again, that would be a really good um, pattern cutting experience and also a lot of uh, technical skills in garment construction. And coupled with that, we need to learn about uh, the history of fashion, really from 1900. And we look at all of the um, designers in each decade and we're going to look at the history uh, of fashion from several different angles to reflect the different types of questions you'll get in the exam. So we look at the role of women from 1900 and how that has affected fashion. Um, because <clears throat> if you think about after the First World War, whenever all the women were helping in the munitions factories and on the front in field hospitals, and they didn't wear their cor corsets, they, and whenever they came back in the 1920s, back home from the war, the garments were fla loose flapper girls, a lot more freedom, and so the fashions actually reflect the role of women. And the other thing is the influence of war, we'll look at that, and we'll also look at new technologies, particularly the space race and all of the new inventions that happened then that helped us to develop all the new uh, fabrics like nylon, polyamide, all that sort of thing. So we, as, and coupled with looking at all those influences over the 20th century that um, have influenced fashion, we'll also be looking at the influential designers. So we need to know um, in detail a few designers from each decade to give us a real good rounded um, idea of the history of the fashion in the 20th century and, and in the last 20 years as well. Um, the other thing we look at is marketing. 
particularly how marketing is done now with digital marketing and all of the different ways that we use social media now to um, advertise uh, to customers and to engage customers and also to sell to customers. And another massive element of the course is obviously environmental and ethical issues. We will, because textiles is a hideous producer or polluter. Um, so textiles fills landfill in the UK. It creates the greenhouse gases through all of the energy that's used. And unfortunately, a massive amount of the textiles we wear are made from oil. So uh, it's a fossil fuel that we are using and also it takes so, so long to degrade. And textiles is one of the worst things for producing microplastics. Because every time you wash something synthetic in your washing machine, you are releasing microplastics into our water system and into the sea. So uh, we look a lot at uh, the environmental issues and also the slavery and other ethical issues within the clothing industry. Coupled with that, my favourite thing with air level textiles is the educational visits. And thankfully, two of the companies that I used to work for in London are still going, they're still there, which is fantastic. And I, every year, I take my A-level students up to Blue Clothing particularly. Uh, Blue Clothing is a massive supplier for Topshop and Oasis. And we go, we have a meeting with Lourdes, she's the production director. She'll talk you through from the very uh, start of their process of uh, designing and selling the garments to either Topshop or Oasis or Zara or whichever customer they sell to at the time. Uh, all of the quality control procedures, preparation for production, where they produce the garments, right up until they're delivered in the store. Career-wise, as I said at, at the start, um, the fashion industry in the UK is a really big employer, both in retail and um, design. And 50% of the students that I've had uh, doing A-level textiles have gone on to do a degree in textiles. And they've either become uh, a fabric designer, um, one is designing knits up in Nottingham, or they've become a teacher, textiles teacher, um, or they've become involved in textiles journalism, uh, fashion journalism. So there's, there's so many different pathways that you can take out of the A-level textiles, and it's just heartening to see that um, at least 50% of those who've done A-level textiles have gone on to make themselves a career in it.